Hello and welcome to my channel where I'll be telling you all kinds of strange stories ranging from true crime to some much less believable although just as fascinating tales. For today's video we have the vengeful tale of Cynthia Siederbacher. Listen in and see what you think. Gioard Eustachio worked as an estate agent as well as a rugby coach and those who knew him well described him as a delight to be around. He had a reasonably peaceful existence in affluent Fallbrook, a suburb of California, with his wife Laura Salinas, two daughters and an 18-year-old son from a previous marriage. A relatively new addition to the family home was Salinas' mother, Cynthia Cedarbacher, who had made the guest house her permanent abode after Eustachio had opened his home to her after her stroke on the 11th of September 2001. But despite outward appearances, there was a very sad family inside the luxurious mansion in Fallbrook, California. Laura and her husband had a strained relationship and Cynthia was accustomed to seeing them squabble. Perhaps tensions were unavoidable with three generations living under one roof, each with its own set of habits. These tensions would often erupt in domestic disputes and clashes between Eustachio and Cedarbacher over the most insignificant of things. Cedarbacher, a regular smoker, would often smoke cigarettes around the home, something Eustachio despised, particularly when she did so in front of his children. Cedarbacher's niece subsequently reported that he had hated her habit so much that while Cedarbacher was smoking on the back patio and Eustachio was watering plants in the garden, he would shower her with water, drenching her. He also threw away Cynthia's late husband's ashes. He said it was a mistake, but Cynthia always thought he had done it out of spite. Another bone of contention was Cedarbacher's criticism of Eustachio's disciplinary methods, which she saw as overly rigorous, military-like and unsuitable for children. As a result, Cynthia hated her son-in-law and it would turn out that she only saw one solution. She would have to kill him. Cynthia went to a nearby gun shop and purchased a 38 caliber five-shot revolver as well as ammo. All she needed then was for Gerard to say or do anything that made her want to murder him and that didn't take long. Two weeks later, it was Cedarbacher's 63rd birthday and it also happened to be her granddaughter's spelling bee competition. The day was meant to be special. It was going to be a day of festivals and celebrations, or so the family thought. Unfortunately, Gerard reportedly made some nasty comments about Cynthia's clothing after she had dressed for the spelling bee, stating she looked ghetto. Cynthia had thought she looked nice and therefore his words proved to be the nail in the coffin for Cedarbacher's patients which had already been wearing thin for all these years. Making her way to her car to fetch her revolver, Cedarbacher found herself heading towards an unsuspecting Eustachio who sat on the back patio and who could never have anticipated that these were his last moments. He was caught off guard by the onslaught. He was shot five times in the back, knocking him to the ground where he pleaded for mercy. But what she had already done was insufficient punishment in Cedarbacker's eyes. She returned to the vehicle to reload the handgun with five more shots. However, the wounded Eustachio had crawled back into the kitchen and locked the door behind him by the time she got back to him. This did not deter the irate grandma, who continued to shoot through the kitchen door and into her son-in-law's torso. Another journey to the vehicle was made, and the pistol was reloaded with five more bullets. By the time it was over, 
Jeward had been hit by 12 of the 15 bullets. The other three were lodged in the kitchen floor. Cynthia walked away from her dying son-in-law and went to a nearby cafe where she nonchalantly ordered bacon and eggs. She then went to a casino after completing her lunch and gambled for almost two hours. It was something she loved and it was her birthday after all. She then went for coffee. She didn't get to finish it though because she was detained at that point by the police. Cynthia began behaving strangely while in custody. She admits in video footage from her original interview that she didn't bother to check on her son-in-law after she shot all the rounds. I didn't care. I'd do it again, she told the police. When the authorities notified Cynthia about her son-in-law's death, she burst into tears, which quickly changed into triumphant yells. Cynthia gives an unequivocal thumbs down when the investigators asked her what she thought of her son-in-law. She told the detectives that Eustachio had mistreated her and her family and that he had even attempted to suffocate her daughter Laura at one time. Cynthia then said that she'd been planning Gioard's murder for some time and that she'd even gone to a shooting range three weeks before the murder to practice her aim. She rationalised her conduct by informing the police about Gioard's mistreatment of her family. So mean to me. To all of them, yes he is, said Cynthia. They were afraid of him. So mean to my daughter. I told her 13 years ago, he's evil. Something happened today at your house. And unfortunately, Laura's husband, you know what Laura's husband's name is? Well, unfortunately, Laura's husband has passed away. Huh? Laura's husband was killed today. He was killed when? Today. We're going to ask you some questions. We're going to ask you some questions because we're trying to figure out what happened today, okay? All right. So what did you think of him? Okay, why do you say that? That's the big thumbs down. You didn't like him. Did anybody try to stop him? Stop him! It sounds like somebody had to stop him. Or I did. I did. Okay. I was guilty. Okay. Somebody had to stop him. I did. Okay. It's okay. Is he dead? You tell me. He's gotta be dead. You think he's dead? I hope so. Cause you can't go like that because it looks like you're, you're ghetto in this. Well, you got your gun from your purse, and then what happened? Went and shot him. It wasn't enough. How many time, rounds do you remember Fifteen. Firing? Fifteen? Yes. Did he say anything to you? Oh, Grandma, I love you. He said that to you? Yeah. After you shot him, he said, Grandma, I love you? Yeah. God damn. Did you check to see if he was dead? I didn't care. Is he alive? He's yeah. not? Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, thank you. Shortly after her interview, Cynthia was given the chance to say goodbye to her family before being led off to jail. While most of them hugged Cynthia, her youngest granddaughter pushed her away and said, No, you killed my dad. Cynthia's daughter Laura testified in her mother's defence at court. Her lawyer told the court that his client snapped after years of seeing her daughter and grandkids being tormented by her son-in-law, Gioard. This is not a case where she did this out of greed or self-interest, he said. She did it, in her mind, to protect her family. He went on to ask that jurors convict his client of voluntary manslaughter rather than murder, saying that this case was sad for everyone involved and that there were no winners. However, the lawyer's efforts were futile. The jury debated for two days before convicting Cynthia Cedarbacher of first-degree murder. Cedarbacher was sentenced to 50 years to life in jail in March 2017, and therefore she will most certainly spend the rest of her life behind bars. Cedarbacher was given the opportunity to address the court before being transported to jail. I'm real, real sorry, she sobbed. 
Cynthia became so overwhelmed with emotions she couldn't speak. Her daughter Laura also made an emotional speech following her mother's conviction. I just want to say that this is a tragedy, she said. I love my mum and I love Gilward. I'm hoping that after today we can move forward. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed the content, click the subscribe and like button so you can receive more content like this strange story every week. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.